Working okay? All right. Well, thank you so much for the invite. It's great to be here with such a full house. Um, I am the, the design lead of Code Academy, a startup based in New York City and proud of it. Uh, and some of you have already used our product, so it's great uh, to hear that. Uh, this is our, uh, our funky office in uh, one of our funky meetups. We do those you know, once in a while and we do try to sort of have a bit of a gauge on how people are using our product and uh, you know, what kind of struggles they are going through. So we, do, we tend to do that a lot more now. Uh, and most of that is because we have uh, you know, an equally funky uh, design team in place uh, and I think that actually has led to a huge sort of emphasis on users and, uh, and particularly on user segmentation which is a good segue to perhaps what was my first project when I landed at Code Academy about 18 months ago. Uh, this was a time that I think I was like Kim is now a single designer in the midst of engineers and uh, unfortunately I wanted to sort of implement this you know this sort of user-centered design approach and uh, we didn't really knew that much about our users so it, it's, it is really hard for you to actually have a user-centered approach when you don't really know your user base that well uh, so this is my first project so again trying to sort of create a segmentation the typologies the archetypes of different users uh, using our product and all of this started with uh, this research this uh, survey that was actually conducted in May last year and it was a really very sort of in-depth research that uh, one of our uh, team members created back then and it evaluated different demographics on different people different users you know their own motivation background level of, of expertise uh, it was really in-depth as you guys can actually see here this was like multiple pages so my first job was really trying to sort of communicate and convey a lot of the insights from this research uh, so we interviewed for that particular survey we interviewed uh, I think roughly 23 users and what I did was actually plotted these users in a segmentation matrix uh, as you can see here and the segmentation matrix was based on level of experience so going from novice to intermediate since an advanced user is probably not the most sort of uh, targeted type of user that we go after and then the other axis was based on engagement from passive to active right so this created the framework the matrix for our user segmentation and then we plotted our four main types our archetypes of users right so here very briefly we have four main types of users and this has helped immensely the design process because now for the first time we could actually talk about a specific user in terms of, of is it an explorer, is it an achiever, understand what motivates an achiever, what is the goal of an achiever um, and again this, we use this segmentation almost every day as we are creating new features like we put ourselves in the mind of an achiever, we put ourselves in the mind of an hobbyist and we go through that process and we see if it actually makes sense. So very briefly, uh, we have the hobbyist, which is perhaps the most passive and newbie of all our, our segmentation. Uh, this is someone that really know, doesn't really know what code is for, but comes to Code Academy to sort of know a bit more about coding, this sort of buzzword. Uh, then you have the achiever, which is a highly motivated user. Uh, not very knowledgeable when it comes to code, but it's an extremely driven person and goes through the hoops uh, in a very fast pan uh, manner. And then you have of course the explorer, perhaps the most interesting sort of segment within our users. Uh, this is someone who already knows a little bit about coding uh, and it's extremely active, it's extremely driven. For someone like a, a typical explorer, just going through the exercises at Code Academy is not even enough. They want to actually get their hands dirty, they want to create projects, they really want to build something. And then you have an interesting case which is a refresher who's someone who knows perhaps the most about coding from the four segments uh, and comes to Code Academy as a way to sort of refresh his memory, refresh. These set times could even be a person that has studied computer science back in the day and has sort of done something else and uses Code Academy as a way to sort of refresh uh, uh, his skills. And these are just some quotes, I'm not going to read through them, but these are some, some quotes that really substantiate the differences between the different segments. And again, the importance of having these, and this, there's a lot more work behind all of this, 
We actually created personas and scenarios based on all these uh, segments. And this has helped immensely the, the, the design process. We actually have a poster of that matrix you saw before right in the entrance of Code Academy. So if you were to come to our office, you will see this, this uh, segmentation matrix straight away. But I'm going to talk to you a little bit about a major bulk of work we have done uh, this year and actually started uh, earlier uh, the year where we actually wanted to sort of really reimagine, redesign from scratch Code Academy, which is not an easy task even for uh, a small startup like we are. And there were different reasons why we had to do that. First of all, that was our beautiful logo <laughs> that was actually created by one of our co-founders in, I think, in approximately 10 minutes, just by going through like a series of fonts and, of course, picking Lobster Font, because as you guys know, Lobster Font is, is the new comic sense, so they say. Uh, so it was a bit problematic, right? We knew we had to sort of update the logo. It was really not reflecting the maturity of the brand, our expansion internationally, and so on. And then, of course, there was a huge problem with uh, visual consistency, right? With visual coherence across the site. These are just some of the pages you could find in Code Academy about eight months ago. Uh, and uh, as you can see, there's no consistency when it comes to UI, color scheme, uh, you, you know, UI patterns, button treatments, you, you name it. It was completely incoherent. So we knew we had to do something about it. So a goal of this, and this was a really sort of, again, long-term project, lasted roughly two or three months. And the goal was, again, to create this sort of new, rethink this new brand uh, that really could reflect our age, our ambition, uh, our image, and main attributes, our, really our culture, our DNA of Code Academy. And there's a long story how we came to this sort of mark uh, we actually partnered with Pentagram for the mark, for the creation of this, this logo, uh, with Adi Opara and his team, brilliant team of talented designers. Uh, there's a long story. I cannot tell you the whole story. Uh, we went through different iterations and research and so on. But we landed on this, uh, this idea of the terminal, the terminal window, which if you used Code Academy uh, before, it was actually right at the homepage. Like straight away, you could actually start coding uh, on the homepage. So that idea of a terminal was very evocative, and it was very central to what Code Academy stands for. Uh, so these are some variations of our final logo. And this is actually the, I know this is a design audience, so we love grids. So I thought about this slide for you guys, just like the underlying grid of our logo, of our mark. So this was perhaps the, the hardest of all the steps, all the phases of rethinking and redesigning Code Academy, right? Coming up with the right logo, especially because it has to go through approvals of, you know, the co-founders. They really need to feel intimate with this brand, with this, with this mark. But after that, it comes, I think, perhaps the hardest of, of everything. Really, again, rebuilding and rethinking and redesigning the entire product. So what I'm going to show you is are just a few of the brand elements. And again, this is a very holistic effort. So we had to sort of rethink, you know, from the very basic sort of branding elements like the, the business cards to, uh, to our badges. Our badges, I think, is also a reflection of how kind of crazy they were in the old times, right? I think we had like every color of the rainbow on those badges and different graphical styles. So we had to sort of create a new badge, as you can see on the right side, that was in line with this graphical language we were creating, this sort of very stylized, kind of modern aesthetic. And then, of course, besides the graphical language and the color scheme and typography, we had to look very closely at the UI. How does this brand convert into the UI, in the product that people are actually going to end up using? So these are some of the UI elements that you can actually see here, from the header to the footer, uh, different sort of blocks and, and UI components, and so on. But I'm, I'm also going to talk to you a little bit about the process of implementing this you know, wide range of, of executions. And this is roughly how everything started. We started off by thinking about those UI elements individually, right, as, as separate entities. And we created the, this first UI toolkit, this, this framework. It was the, our initial building block set of elements. And this was the first pass at it, so really, really simple, right? Right, so there's only like a few buttons here and there. And then over time, this framework, this UI toolkit, grew exponentially. Like we, 
to, the, to this point, right? And I think we had a few more uh, uh, comps. But this covered everything that you can think of in terms of our digital product from you know, details on the header, the footer, UI modules, color scheme, typography, uh, UI patterns, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So once we had the framework in such a way, what we did next was actually we created a sitemap, which has, was actually also very novel. We actually had never created a sitemap of Code Academy, so it was like a first as well. So we created the sitemap of Code Academy, and what we did is we divided, as you can see from different colors, into four different sprints, and we tackled those pages in one sprint at a time. And this was the only way I think we could keep uh, any mental sanity for creating and for sort of redesigning the, the, the broad uh, product of Code Academy. So here are some of those pages, uh, as you can find them right now on the site, live on the site. So here in the middle we have the Code Academy stories, for instance. The one on the right is the, the profile page, the new profile page. Uh, then you here have a few other examples, like the blog on the left side, the About Us page in the center, and a few other pages. And because I have a bit of time, I would like to also talk to you about some of the principles. Uh, some people might think design is a little bit arbitrary or subjective. I'm solidly against any of those kind of views. Uh, and this is actually some of the principles that helped us guide through the process of redesigning our entire product. So I'm going to talk about 10 quick principles that, again, were fundamental in, our, on the, in this process. One of the principles is this idea of one column, right? Some of you probably know a lot of these principles, and we kind of gather many of them. This idea of one column is, was really important, so we tried as much as possible to keep almost every page to one single column. And this is immensely important because it helps you focus on the core purpose of that page, of that section, right? Uh, one column also gives you a lot more control over the narrative, whatever the narrative you want to display on this particular page, which I think is the very opposite principle to what Andrew was showing with, uh, with the Chinese websites. Um, then, of course, you have this idea of this principle of social proof. This is a very sort of common principle now, and we wanted to embrace it as much as we could. Uh, social proof is important because sometimes you don't want to be sort of pretentious and dull in talking about yourself. So you should let users do the talking in terms of how great your product is and how well they like using it and so on and so on. So just let your users actually do the talking. The, second, the third principle was this idea of, of contrast. And contrast was critical to this redesign. We actually didn't use color that much. If you go to the site right now, there's only you know, sparkles of color here and there. And color is actually used with a very specific purpose in mind. You normally would find color associated with specific CTAs. So here is an example where, by just by looking at the page, you can just identify straight away the main CTAs, either by signing in on the very top of the header, or submitting a video, uh, a video or just a form, submitting a form on the left side. So it, it is important to make your CTAs again, as prominent and as, as distinguishable from other surrounding elements. And one of the critical sort of tools for that is playing with color in such a way. Our principle number four was really getting rid as much as we could of form fields. This is not a very sort of groundbreaking principle, but still, I think all of us who went through forums and, and, and different websites, we kind of tired of just typing and typing and typing. So it was really critical for us to try to minimize as much as we could the number of form fields. And again, this is important because it increases, of course, conversion rates and really reduces considerably uh, user typing fatigue. Another key principle for us, principle number five, was this idea of keeping focus. And here again, it's not just identifying and distinguishing the main CTAs on the page, it's also reducing the, the number of CTAs to the, you know, to the bare minimum. So here is again a, a page where you only have like two primary CTAs. Right? Again, the signing on the very top and the follow if you want to follow uh, this particular Code Academy user. Uh, so again, reducing the number of like peripheral CTAs as much as you can so that users can really focus on what's important to them, what matters in this particular section, in this particular page. Uh, principle number six, an important one when it comes to interaction design, it was the principle of direct manipulation. 
this is a really universal interaction design principle and it really makes for great simplicity and great cleanliness when it comes to UI implementation. Uh, so we allowing users throughout the site to actually directly act upon UI elements like cards and so on. And that by doing that, they actually revealed contextual actions and contextual controls, right? So this ends up minimizing uh, a lot the amount of links and Chrome that you have on the page and throughout the site. So we didn't use it as much as we could, but we try to use the principle of direct manipulation as, you know, in, in a sort of balanced way throughout the site. Principle uh, number seven was the notion, of course, of visual hierarchy. Any designer on the, in the audience knows how important visual hierarchy is in terms of layout. Uh, we wanted to emphasize uh, hierarchy in different ways by using typography, so different sizes of typography throughout the page, but also by providing a lot of these bands and different color schemes, with different gray scales, so that the user could understand clearly that this was the top area of the page, it was getting down to the page, the bottom, and so on. So it was a very sort of clear uh, hierarchy that we're trying to sort of uh, uh, play with. And again, very sort of, as you can see in many of these pages, white space was sort of critical for us so that the page is looking like it's breathing very comfortably. Principle number eight was this idea of uh, visual recognition. And this is still like a really remarkable principle for us. So this is something that we, as we can all recognize, uh, Recognition is better than recall. We all know, we probably, well, I hopefully all of you will know that. Uh, so as much as possible, we try to comfort users by introducing visual elements that they were already familiar with, right? So this is an example of someone's project that they're working on. They're, you know, building this project. And we could just show a card with text on it, with the title of the project, but actually it's showing the thumbnail, the project, where they actually left off the last time they used Code Academy. Uh, again, it's playing on this idea that recognition is a lot better than recall, right? So it's giving that sort of visual anchor, this visual association. Principle number nine is the notion of larger targets. And things are not just bigger because they are, you know, trendy. Uh, we have increased the size of form fields, calls to action, and links a lot, a lot more than we had before. This not only, of course, increases usability, as I don't know if you guys are familiar with Fitz Law or not. Raise your hands if you are. All right, I see a few hands. But for those who don't know Fitz Law, I think it's one of the most interesting design principles out there. It's a universal design principle that basically says that the smaller and more distance a target is, the more time you're going to take for you to interact with that target. So this is the reason why larger things tend to be better in terms of usability. So we did that, but not only for usability purposes, but also, of course, so that it could be adaptable to other touch forms, uh, to other sort of platforms, uh, particularly the ones that are touch enabled platforms like mobile and tablets and so on. And then finally, our 10th principle is idea of first use. And I think this is a principle we take it to heart and we're still learning on, on how to do this in the best possible way. It's not an easy principle at all. So the principle is really basically about the designing for edge cases. Edge cases we normally take for granted or we simply forget about them. Uh, so here we should always concentrate on optimizing for a great out-of-the-box experience, right? A great onboarding experience, a first-time user experience. Uh, because in many ways, when, once you land on Code Academy or any other product, the first time you land it, it's, it's, uh, it's a very sort of daunting place if it's like empty, right? Like a zero world is, is, pretty, is pretty much of a cold place and you don't want that as, you know, for user experience for your product. So this completes my list of 10 principles. Hopefully they were somehow insightful for you and really thank you. Wow, that was some crazy. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> and I think I have time for a few questions as well. Sorry? Thank you, to you too. Oh, cool. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, all right, Doug, <laughs> questions? All right. I have a question about your form fields. Mm -hmm. um, what is your um, point of view, your opinion on exposed form fields in the scenarios where you have to input data? Yeah, 
I think it does. I mean, it, it's, it, it really depends on, you know, the project. I mean, it really depends on the context of that particular form, right? If the whole purpose of the page is for you to fill the form, why should you hide it, right? That's the main purpose. If it's more of a secondary thing, it really depends again on the goal of that page, on the goal of that section. If it's a primary emphasis of, again, that page, definitely you should expose it. But you should always be concerned on the amount of form or the amount of fields that the user has to go through. Uh, if it's more like a secondary thing, then you should probably, you know, hiding it, you know, could be a good alternative. Why not? Hi, Pat Miller from Remember. And uh, I wondered, did you have any success metrics uh, in advance of doing this design? And then have you gone back to see uh, you know, how that's worked out? Like what areas did this benefit Code Academy the most? Uh, you know, that kind of any, any light to shed on that, like you know, how the users reacted, or do we have better adoption of people learning faster, you know, that kind of mobile tension into those kind of yeah, no, that's, that's a great point. I mean, we, we, yes, we, a lot of the things you see here were not implemented, you know, in total blindness. We actually tested before, and we did small tasks with small pages, with a few pages, and we only implemented the full, the design that you saw after many of those tests, and after realizing that it was a substantial increase in terms of click-through rates, in terms of, you know, submissions, and so on. Uh, what this didn't cover, though, was our main learning environment, or what we call the composer, right? Which is the black box that people are used to seeing when they go to Code Academy and, and learn to code. So this is actually something we're doing right now. So we're kind of redesigning and rethinking that, that particular black box as we speak. Uh, so that didn't cover that so much. But there was a substantial increase in, in sign-ups. There was a substantial increase in, uh, in click-through rates and a few other metrics that were positive. So, you know, one of the main reasons why we decided to sort of go with this cleaner design. Oh, yeah, time for one more. There's one. Yeah, All right. Uh, I want to say thank you very much. Also, I want to clarify uh, it's our fault that says thank you. <laughs> this is not by design, yeah. We didn't know it was by design, so it's our fault. Thank you so much. Thank you.